Engaging conversations about the Bible. This is the Remnant Thoughts Podcast with Ruskin and Jordan. All right. Anything you need to know before we kick off, Joe? Are you ready to go? Uh, I mean, I don't, I guess I'll just go with it. See what happens. I reckon. All right. Well, that's what we do too. That's, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Sometimes awesome. it goes good and sometimes it, it just goes. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it just goes. <laughs> All right. We'll, well see. Hope it goes good this time. That's right. All right. Well, I'll kick us off. Well, hello everybody. Welcome to our podcast today. I'm Pastor Ruskin. And I'm Pastor Jordan. And we are joined by a, a friend of ours, Joseph Cotto. We'll probably call him Joe throughout the yes. podcast, but he, he works in the Christian movie scoring field. Is that correct? Is that how, how, to, how to describe that? Yeah, yeah. Film, you could just say film industry or, or uh, music production, whichever one you like. Okay, so sounds good. Well, we like to start off by having some fun on some things. And so we have headlines, two lies, and a truth. Or is it two truths and a lie? Two truths and a lie. Is that right? I got two truths and a lie. All right, two truths. And a lie. So Jordan is going to read us three headlines, and two of them are going to be true. One of them is going to be the lie, and Joe and I will try to decipher and figure out what's what. So go ahead, Jordan. All right. So the first headline here is, Soldier who fled to North Korea likely, quote, not thinking clearly, close quote, the Army chief says. Second headline here is, Congress warns shrimp imported from China could be spying on Americans. Shrimp. Shrimp. Shrimp imported from China. Sounds like a clickbait title. Like It would probably be the people importing the shrimp, I would assume. I would hope anyways. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Headline number three, GOP lawmakers predict an imminent fist fight between Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Boebert. Imminent. Like, it's coming. Yeah, imminent. <laughs> All right. All right, so read them again qu- quickly. If one of them's a lie. Okay. Um, number one, soldier who fled to North Korea likely not thinking clearly, Army Chief says. Definitely. Congress warned shrimp imported from China could be spying on Americans. GOP lawmakers predict an imminent fistfight between Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Boebert. Huh. The last two sound equally fake to me. They do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with the imminent... Fist yeah, fight. I mean, I think that one's the lie. Possible might sound a little more uh, possible fist fight. That sounds a little more imminent. Yeah, fist fight. It's, imminent. Coming. <laughs> it's coming. We set the date. We selling the tickets. Yeah, that's, a, that's my guess. Joe, Joe, what do you have? What's your guess? I I think the same thing. Imminent fist fight. So what do we have, Jordan? The fake one is Congress warned shrimp imported from China could be spying on America. The one about Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Boebert is true. Is it true? That's an actual headline from independent.co.uk. All right. And who's warning us about that? Uh, Republican Tennessee Representative Tim Burchett. (laughs) Y'all got to listen to this because I still don't know if this is a parody or (laughs) not. All right. So, yeah, read read it to us. Listen, it says, uh, he says, a fistfight could break out at any moment. And uh, he, the Mr. Burchett told the publication that he was serious and added that he was enjoying the Republicans' rivalry as a professional wrestling fan. He told the outlet, I'm friends with both of them. It's entertaining to think that a fistfight could break out any moment. I kind of dig that. So he's excited about this <laughs> fistfight a- as a wrestling fan. So he's ready for like a, a rock bottom or a tombstone yeah. pile drive yeah. at, at any second. <laughs> I don't know. I'll probably be ready to see that too. <laughs> It does not sound real. <laughs> it doesn't sound it doesn't. real. It, uh, I think I think the imminent, uh, the word imminent there was also kind of clickbaity because it didn't sound as imminent <laughs> as it as the title made it sound. Right. Yeah. It's the imminent. If it would have said possible or something like that, I think I would have said yeah. But <laughs> right. imminent fist fight is, is what got me. But the shrimp. Yeah. That, that, was, that was that's legitimate. No, 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 no. That's the fake title. Oh, that's yeah. fake. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, there are no, the there are no Chinese satellite <laughs> no, shrimp. No, yeah, satellite <laughs> shrimp. That, yeah. Did you come up with that? Uh, that no, was kind of funny. No, that was from the Onion. Oh, okay. <laughs> I got you. I was All like, right. yeah, that's hilarious. All right, so you ready for for the ones I came up with yeah, here? Yeah, let's have it. All right, McDonald's robber demands chicken nuggets, but has to accept breakfast food because it was still too early. Mm. <laughs> the man's chicken nuggets, but he had to accept breakfast. It was still too early. 
UPS loses a family's $846,000 inheritance, offers to refund the $32 shipping fee. Oh. <laughs> Revolutionary diet pill hits the market, lose 50 pounds in just one week. Okay. I see stuff like that all the time. That one's got to be real. Really? <laughs> it's got to be real, but not necessarily true. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I overthought okay. the headlines the first time we did them too. I'm like, is a real headline or is the headline <laughs> no, no, true? It's a real headline. I, it's right, yeah. <laughs> That's two oh, different things. Real headline. Um, These are really good because there's no like political angle to them that somebody might be uh, satire, satire, right. whatever right, the right. form of that is. <laughs> right. So McDonald, McDonald Robert demands chicken nuggets and he has to accept breakfast food because it was still too early. UPS loses a family's $800,000 inheritance but offers to return a $32 shipping fee. A revolutionary diet pill hits the market, lose 50 pounds in just one week. See, that last one is so outrageous. It has to be <laughs> the one that's, like, tricking us. <laughs> <laughs> the one that's most in between to me, like, UPS sounds realistic and the the... Last one sounds outrageous, but the first one, the McDonald's one, sounds like it could be in between outrageous and, and realistic. So I, think, I was going to say, I think the McDonald's one is fake. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'll because go I, I don't, I, like, they have the chicken nuggets there, and I don't think anybody in their right mind would deny someone holding a gun to your face chicken nuggets. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> you can't have these chicken nuggets. McMuffin for you. <laughs> no, it's too early. You have to have hash browns. That's right, that's right. So y'all, y'all want to know? Y'all got y'all guests locked right, in on yeah, McDonald's? Yeah, McDonald's. Locked in on McDonald's. The McDonald's one was real. Oh. What? <laughs> that was a real headline. And the UPS was a real headline. The diet pill lose 50 pounds in one week was not Oh, real. See, man. Okay, that was a hard one. You convinced me on that one, Joe. You had me <laughs> so... <laughs> I, that's what I was saying. I see, I, see, I see fake headlines like that all the time. So I thought, I was like, his, it's probably a real headline. Right, real headline with false Not information. Yeah, with false information. Right, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, we go through those all the time. All right, well, let's jump on into the podcast. We are happy to have Joe with us today. He does work in the film industry, and we'll get some links to all of his stuff where you could connect with Joe on the um, description. But Joe, you want to share a little bit about how you got started in the music composition? Yeah. So ever since I was. Um, really small every time i watched a movie um i always loved listening to the music behind the film and uh picking up on how they reuse themes and how how they uh weave themes together to to help drive the story along and and with the plot and everything um and i also grew up in a musical family our whole family does uh, right. we all sing and play instruments and everything so i i've learned to recognize um different Thing, different things I enjoy about music from a young age. Um, and then one day, my brother, uh, my older brother, he showed me GarageBand on an iPad. <laughs> we had we had a family iPad. I kid you not, this is how it started. He showed me GarageBand, and and like he would he had made his own little track, and I thought that was just the coolest thing. So I went and I I just got all up into GarageBand. Uh, making all I remade film scores that I liked. I uh, I made my own music. Um, I thought it was the coolest thing since sliced bread. Um, <laughs> looking back on it, it's very bad. You can still find it all on my YouTube channel. Uh, <laughs> it is very bad, but I keep it up there because uh, uh, for memory sakes or whatever. Um, eventually, I, I upgraded equipment and uh, learned more about. Uh, different things I could buy to, to improve uh, the sound of my music. And I've gotten a few uh, film jobs ever since. So, Yeah, that's awesome. And I keep up, up with Joe. Joe was one of my Bible students in Bible class that I, I taught. And I, I remember, because I record music and have been for many years, and mm -hmm. I had mentioned something, so Joe and I had a few conversations about, about yeah, music. Yeah, that, that year that you were my Bible teacher, that was actually the year that I first got garage band i remember it because i was like playing around with it and then uh i think that was the year i launched my youtube channel where i, I make things just for fun um so yeah i remember that i remember asking you some things also um 
Mr. Kaneki was my one of my uh, substitute teachers that same year. So yeah, y'all, yeah, both, y'all yeah. both taught me at one point. Yeah, and a lot of people are calling him Mr. Canoe. I yeah. remember that they said, "Hey, Mr. we had Canoe, Mr. Canoe." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I had lots of nicknames: Mr. Canoe, Mr. Kowalski, <laughs> everything, <laughs> except Mr. Mr. Kaneki. Wazowski. <laughs> yeah. My my phone doesn't even say your name correctly at all. It says calling Jordan Kanaji. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah I'm that's sure my it wife does. It's a unique last name. Yeah. So Joe, who are some of your inspirations as far as getting into music and music scoring and things like that? Yeah, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. So one of them is is definitely John Williams. John Williams. Um, the second biggest. I have two two like top ones. It's John Williams and for for specific reasons i would also say hans zimmer a little bit higher than john williams not necessarily that i like his music better or the films better um though in some cases i guess i do but uh, i like he's more of an inspiration to me because he has no like film uh music training he, oh, okay. his, the most amount of training that he ever got was two weeks of piano classes and then he was kicked out. <laughs> so that's like, <laughs> that's literally his only professional training. And I, I have no professional training either. I do everything by ear. I don't know how to read notes, uh, but he kind of showed that you can make it uh, in the film industry regardless of that. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, how how would you like to be the piano teacher who said I kicked Hans Zimmer out? You know, told him, yeah, yeah, don't come back. That would be, that'd be awesome. That would be awesome. <laughs> it's either a great story where you can make yourself real cool, or you'd be like, "What was I not thinking?" Or I be like, "Man, <laughs> the opportunity I had there." Yeah. So, what's going on in your career in the film music industry right now? What's your your vision for what you're trying to do, and, and where are you at right now? Yeah, my vision, um, like. I don't know if I can call it an end goal because it's kind of like one of those goals that you're constantly pursuing. But one thing that I really want to be able to do is be enabled to help films have like an iconic score, like Christian films specifically, because like, I mean, the only, the only films I can really think of that are Christian based that have like a, a really recognizable score. Like if you started humming it, someone else might, mm-hmm. might pick up on it might be like, um, Moses, I forget, I forget, uh, uh Prince of Egypt, right. the animated one from yeah. like the eighties or seventies. And then, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. Is that old is. Now. <laughs> what is it? Is it the nineties? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know <laughs> if it was the seventies, but other than that, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. Um, then also the one that that they also made uh, the Joseph movie that had some good music, um, but really other than that, and maybe Passion of the Christ I've heard has a good one, but I haven't really watched that that much. But anyway, the the point is most Christian films don't have like an iconic score, yeah. and I'm not at all saying that I'm like there yet that I can write stuff like that, but I want to be able to one day. So I'm trying to get more experience and practice and uh, get more film gigs to where I can learn more things. And and I love to collaborate with other composers and pick their brains and eventually be able to, to maybe be the Hans Zimmer of Christian film. That would be awesome. (laughs) Yeah, that is cool. And so uh, I guess what we're, you mentioned about your YouTube channel, but how do people keep up with you? What's going on? Be able to listen to your stuff, that kind of thing. Yeah, I have, um, I do a lot of, well, I'm on Facebook a lot. I'll say it that way. I don't post a lot, but I'm on Facebook a lot. So you can, you can reach me through Facebook. Um, I have a website that has links to my other social accounts. I, I just recently made an Instagram. Um, I guess the easiest way to connect would be to go to josephcaudlemusic.com and then I, you can scroll to the bottom and I have like all, all of my social accounts listed if you wanted to reach me there or just contact me through the website, either one. Yeah. And so it's exciting to see, I guess, the, the level of Christian movies is kind of going up. Yes. I guess a long time ago, I don't know whether you call them Christian movies, but at least these Bible epics, the Ten Commandments, Ben-Hur, things like that. The mm-hmm. quality for the time was very, very good. And then 
the Christian theme movies kind of went into yeah. a low where the subject matter might have been very good, the dialogue might have been good, but the production quality was was very very low. And you know, um, I, I don't know. We we I say we Christians we've been traditionally. <clears throat> Um, pretty bad at <laughs> movie. Well, yeah. we're, we're people of a book yeah. first of all, right? Mm-hmm. Not, not yeah. of a movie. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But the book was better. That's right. The book yeah. was better. <laughs> but now Christian movies, they are getting better. The quality is getting oh, very good. Um, even in indie films, e- any small budget films, but in Christian movies, they're, they're getting better. So that's exciting to watch. Um, have you been able to work on any Christian movies or anything you can yeah. tell us about or? Yeah, I I can say I I just finished one um, just a couple weeks ago. I finished my work on it. I've been working on it for the past few months. Um, It's called The First Step. uh, And it's... And it's a doozy? No, I'm just joking. (laughs) Well, kind of, yeah. It's about a a guy who... um, I can't, like, spoil it, but he has, like, something happened to him, and he has to be able to rely on the Lord to help him overcome it. And it's kind of, it's, it's a good storyline and plot point. Um, there is that. And then there's another one that I worked on that's not out yet. We're not quite done with that one. It's, it's a short film, uh, but it's, it's, uh, we're going to try to submit that in film festivals and stuff and see how, how that one goes. Um, and I've, I've been talking to other directors about working on a few other projects. We just haven't started those yet. So <laughs> So I got stuff in the pipeline that's just in, all in different spots. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. That's very cool. I'm I'm enjoying the some of the new Christian movies that came out recently. Uh, my wife and I just recently watched uh, a few movies put out by Christian companies and I don't know, it's exciting to see the the standards are getting yeah. getting better and better, but um but no, I've always appreciated Joe appreciated his family. His dad's a pastor. He comes from a Christian family. He mentioned they're all musicians. What one of your brothers plays bass, one plays guitar, one plays yeah. drums. You play piano, and maybe y'all all play a little bit of everything on <laughs> as well. But uh, sometimes, but we all we all like have a certain instrument we're best at. Okay, yeah. And most of us sing too. Yeah, right. Yes, yeah, sing. They they harmonize very well and things. And so I've been keeping up with Joe since he was in my Bible class. Got to know him there and. We did have some good times in that, yeah. that Bible class. It was quite an interesting. That was uh, my favorite class, honestly. Of okay. that year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it was a great group of students, and we had some good discussions and, and everything. So it was a great class. And and then y'all moved off to uh, Georgia. Y'all left us. Yeah, we moved to Georgia. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. The Lord called us over here uh, actually because my dad took up a pastor position at a, a church here in Thompson, Georgia. Uh, it's Washington Heights Baptist Church. Um, I think the website is WashingtonHeightsBC.org. Okay. I, I hope that's right. <laughs> okay. Well, very good. We got anything else you wanted to share with us before we sign off or anything? Uh, not necessarily for me. I didn't know if y'all had any other questions. <laughs> yep. But no, I'm good if y'all are good. Uh, I don't have any additional questions, but, uh, man, it's really interesting to hear what you're doing. And, and I uh, hope you have a lot of uh success a lot of great opportunities and uh, i hope to see your name and credits at the movie theater one time uh, sometime. well thank you i hope to i hope so too <laughs> yeah no that'd be cool I, i'll tell everybody hey i know that guy <laughs> I, I taught him in eighth grade <laughs> that's right Ta- taught him a few things about the vibe i i, I know that guy yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. i All actually right. did learn a lot about uh specifically the feasts of israel yeah in that bible class sorry should have given context before i yeah. said that no, that's, I mean, that's encouraging. I, whenever you teach something, you wonder, are our people learning? Yeah. Yeah. No, I did. I did. I learned a lot. Yeah, I think uh, what did we, we did the Feast of Israel and maybe the Book of Acts that year. Is that the two things we went through? I think, I, don't I think we did. I know we wrote a paper on how the Feast of Israel pointed to Jesus. I still have that paper in my Google Drive, actually. <laughs> okay. I think we had y'all do a paper too on the on the book of Acts and somebody mm-hmm. wrote that all the people gathered I'm I don't think I told you this in the class, but <laughs> somebody wrote and I let y'all write about anything you wanted in the book of uh-huh. Acts, just from the book of Acts, but somebody wrote about how all the people gathered together at this land and started to build a tower, but then they couldn't understand one another and then these tongues of fire landed on them and they could speak <laughs> all the languages and they finished their their tower. <laughs> <laughs> the tower. Yeah, and I'm sitting there thinking, how how do I grade yeah. this <laughs> this paper? <laughs> well, you got some uh, some points right, but uh, not necessarily the right order. 
Yeah. Well, and, and, and some of them are just not right in right. general. And full credit for realizing that there is some parallel from <laughs> the Tower of, of Babel. Somewhere in the Bible. <laughs> right. The Tower of Babel and what happened at um, the day of Pentecost when they were all gathered. That was an exact opposite. <laughs> it was a confusing to, you know, a knowing. But, yeah, full credit for realizing that there is, you know, some I link there. I feel like I have in my head which one of them wrote that. <laughs> yeah, well, we're not, we're not going <laughs> to guess about that. <laughs> But no, it was a great class for sure, yeah. All right. Well, Joe, we appreciate you coming on the podcast today. We certainly wish a lot of success for you, and hopefully uh, what your talents and abilities are able to get the message of the gospel out to people through you know through the medium of movies and on. So we're excited about that. Absolutely. I'm excited, and thank you all for having me. It's been a blast. <laughs> all right. Well, thank everybody for tuning into the podcast. I'm Pastor Ruskin. I'm Pastor Jordan. And I'm Joe. Joe, yep. This right. is the Remnant Thoughts <laughs> Podcast. Blessings with Ruskin and Jordan.